pour cette première présentation, j'accueille. I'd like to welcome Amory Grimbert, the chairman of the board of directors for OPM 3FT. Bonjour à tous, je dis bonjour. Hello everyone, I'm saying hello because we have uh, people. I know, in Argentina, the United States and Africa. It all depends on their time frame, so for some it may be good morning. Tonight, because at each conference it's important to note for the newcomers joining the project, as time goes by, it is important to point out two or three main pointers about OP3FT in terms of its legal structure, its mission, and the work carried out by the OP3FT fund. We spoke about this at previous conferences, and this time I decided with the team to find out what were the most frequently asked questions to try to give an example of the institutional type of questions that could be asked and how we answer, and what are the answers expected by those who ask those questions. Of course, this relates to all people in the project. So let me now move on to the next page. A quick recap on OP3FT. As Jean-Manuel said, we're talking about the Organization for the Promotion, Protection, and Progress of Programs Technology. We set up this organization in 2012, four years ago. Its status is a non-profit organization working f for the common or public interest. This is possible because OP3FT's legal structure is what we call a fonds de dotation in French, an endowment fund, largely inspired by Anglo-Saxon structures of endowment funds. But in France, we give it a legal personality. Now, the question that's most frequently asked is, what is an endowment fund? But I won't give you a, a course on law instead of Julien Laurent, our legal officer, is in charge of that. But it's important to know what you mean by an endowment in the Fogans project. Now, the OP3FT endowment fund, we're talking about a set of goods and laws specific to Fogans technology, meaning uh, software systems, technical specs, software itself, and uh, Patents, uh, brands, domain names, this is what is referred to as uh, goods and rights linked to Fergan's technology. The important thing is that law allows us to make the endowment fund or the uh, goods and rights linked to the endowment fund non-transferable and intangible. We can say this... Uh, Put it in this way, Fogans technology cannot be transferred. This is the first point, and this is key for the stability of the project on the Internet. It is intangible too, meaning it cannot be touched. In other words, once all the work we've done each year, not just from the start, becomes a part of the endowment fund, it also becomes intangible. I think the term is non-transferable. The legal term is non-transferable. This is a prerequisite, and this is stated in the bylaws. This is an essential condition to carry out our mission for the public interest. The public interest meaning making things available to all, not just for a specific group of people. Behind this concept, therefore, we have a universal approach to Frogan's technology, and this, as we shall see, is what we're trying to do. The team at OP3FT, well, about 30 people. You can have access to our activity report published on op3ft.org. 
uh, we call on more people for uh, punctual missions. But on average, the team is composed of employees and uh, service providers, uh, regular or punctual, uh, 30 people all in all, which is small to carry out a public interest assignment at global level. In the three P's, we have promotion, protection, and progress. I will come back to that in just a few slides. And to specify each concept, promotion, protection, and progress, because these are words, but it's a good idea to shed some light on them in concrete terms. There's a documentary put online in 2013, but that started in 2012 when OP3FT was set up, representing the four permanent objectives of the project. These are the fundamentals. We have spoken about them several times. I don't won't even say sorry to those who have already seen and read it or heard about it, because I think it's important for newcomers to understand what underlies all our actions at OP3FT. These are the four objectives you can see on screen. The two at the top, linked to the very concept of our invention. Well, the Frogan's invention is about thinking of this relationship between uh, site publishers on internet or elsewhere and end users who may be a client a user uh, for leisure, and behind this, there is no specific user profile. It could be the 3.5 billion internet users identified today. The content, it could be the 170 publishers of websites active on the internet, or publishers of mobile applications, and all those producing content and who would like to show it to others. In the DNA of Frogan's technology, you have this balance between relations. We hope we are, uh, can provide a balance between a site publisher and its users. The project is there to bring a new way of communicating, a new way of interacting with content on screens, whatever the screen, connected, any screen. And there's one important point, and this is more and more the case, but it is now a part of the internet, privacy, the need for privacy. When we provide technology on the internet, we try to see to it that technology uh, is in line with the need to preserve the private life of end users and not put functions, features that could be ill-used by content publishers, but at the same time it did satisfy publishers who have good ideas and good features. And for that you need to strike the right balance. Here are two examples to illustrate this permanent objective. First of all, we saw to it that Fergrant's player cannot enable cookies without the end user knowing. It decides. It is a decision taken by the end user if it is set up. And Jean-Manuel showed you the very graphic uh, features of Forgan's object on a screen, but it should not be intrusive. So the technology does not enable publishers to trigger the opening up of a Frogan site on a screen. These mechanisms are there to uphold the elementary rights of the end users. The last point, seen to it that technology is always secure and simple. This is very important because when we constantly innovate in the web, is an example where sometimes you lose track of these two objectives, security and simplicity, you realize that innovation also brings along the adding of newer features at OP3FT. When making a choice, we systematically ask ourselves if the choice we're making to help technology to evolve will help technology 
to always remain secure and simple. It is an objective. Of course, it's a challenge. Of course, there are hackers. There are people who are there to prove the opposite. And that is what makes the strength of a project such as ours once it is largely spread on the Internet. And we are constantly focused on that objective. Let me go a bit faster so as not to extend beyond the time allocated so that I can cover the other two permanent objectives. We have realized through our culture, our organization, and our knowledge of standardization organizations on the Internet. You have the Internet Engineering Task Force, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, specifying the web for HTML and for other protocols. ITF in particular. There are many more things that are specified by these bodies, apart from HTTP. But there's a great interest in the stability of a, of a web technology, a software layer that must, you must be very consistent in drafting the technical specifications, which is done on paper. There's a lot of R&D written on paper, in black and white, no color, like requests for a comment. RFCs, which are an authority on the internet today, once you write these specifications, you need to produce an implementation of references, so software, to show how good practices of implementing these specifications are carried out. Thirdly, you need a charter, a legal framework that is totally consistent, in line with the various uh, national legislations, for striking a common uh, the commonalities with all countries that lay claim to the open internet standards such as Forgans and laying claim to universality in how it is used. And lastly, at OP3F2, and I believe it's important for everyone who's joining us to, to know this, by and by as we spread the project and with our different releases, you must understand that it's all about having happy people with foregun for sites, those who design and those who consult them. But you also have the idea that the technology doesn't just destroy jobs. There are theorists saying that innovation destroys jobs. Our goal or our idea is that by delivering an open internet standard, we can promote jobs, innovation, economic development, and in recent years enable many different players, developers, graphists, those who were lost by all the complexity that's increasing with the publication of content on the internet so that they can come back to simple things, which I hope and we all hope will once again provide business, desire to have to win new customers and to offer services. And I think we'll tell you more about this at this conference. Uh, in just three slides, I will be very quick now to guide you towards an article on the bylaws of the OP3FT. Each time I speak here to talk about the bylaws, you may think it's my bedside book. But I think it's a must read for anyone who'd like to be seriously a part of the uh, for against project. Who knows the organization uh, standardizing the web? Very few people. But at this stage of the game, it is extremely important for all people who are interested in doing things seriously with foregun technology, doing business in particular, to guarantee the guarantee lies in these bylaws where many things have been said and where they are upheld. Our board is uh, organized with uh, questions dealt with on governance so that we can be constantly challenged with respect to how the bylaws are upheld. We've developed Forgan's technology based on the open internet standard. I didn't say this before, but that was stated in the, on the previous uh, slide. We have permanent working teams at OP3FT. It's not just a... Uh, structure talking about promoting something that comes from elsewhere, Frogan's technology is developed at OP3FT 
and with permanent working teams, about 30 people as we have said before. We have a way of working, work based on the three Ps, protection, promotion and progress. All of this carried out by these teams. For example, in the way you do things, in Article 5, at the start of that article, the bylaws provide, and I took some examples because we have a long list that may be very long, and I don't think that you would appreciate that, those of you um, who are watching us on the internet or to hear me paraphrasing the bylaws. I took three examples that we ran them with the team when I prepared this conference. Well, there's three examples uh, that I'd like to highlight. First of all, I spoke about in-house teams, but Frogan's technology also seeks to become uh, richer and richer with the help of contributors. And it's very important, therefore, to see to it that the third-party intervention with third parties making their contribution is properly developed within a given frame so as not to restrict the conditions for using Frogan's technology. So at OP3FT, we have a charter that was set up, the Charter of Contributors to Frogan's technology, and those who want to contribute to the work of OP3FT must irrevocably and free of charge transfer the rights linked to their work. There too, it's if OP3FT is informed that someone, even in goodwill, wanted to pass on to us work that they did alone, but integrating potentially pieces of code or some other contribution that would contravene third party rights, OP3FT cannot accept it because OP3FT in a few months' time does not want to find itself in a situation where it is no longer authorized to use this part of the technology because if they did not pay attention to this or that contribution made. Or if someone says in six months or one year's time that you now have to pay for this part, and then all of a sudden you have to pay royalties to third parties. So this is important, and this is less specified in the contributor's charter. A second example, using open standards to develop Frogan technology and to run Frogan's sites on the internet. For example, Frogan's technology with the languages that we developed using a standard grammar called XML. We are working on DNS, the domain name system, an internet standard, and so on. Frogan's technology uses open internet standards, and this is why. We can be, we are spreadable, if that word exists, at large. Specifications, the technical specifications that we develop at OP3FT are not subject to approval by our peers. Other organizations of, for standardization on the internet and that have existed prior to OP3FT by far. For example, we do not need to have our specifications approved by IETF or W3C to publish or to enable the global use of a technical specification linked to Frogan's technology. These are just some examples. Now, the work of the OP3FT, this is linked to the three Ps. I will go quickly now. If I were to take the way promotion is carried out, you must understand promotion as a part of the Frogans project, not that of a project that is sold. We are, this is the Progen's, uh, Frogans project, which is for free to enable different stakeholders and users of the internet to make the most of Frogans technology. And promotion for us should not be understood in the sense of uh, pub uh, publicity advertising. We have teams at OP3FT, not just for promotion, legal experts, developers, entrepreneurs who are there, depending on whom you are dealing with, they may be, and who may be interested in Frogan's technology, they speak amongst their own peers. There's nothing better than a legal expert speaking to another legal expert, to a developer with a developer, and an entrepreneur with an entrepreneur. 
So much more will be said about promotion. I won't dwell on that. On the notion of protection, protection, you imagine that's very legal straight away. And it is indeed one of the main efforts carried out at OP3FT, working on intellectual and industrial property of OP3FT by protection. You must understand the fact that OP3FT manages patents, brands, domain names, and it's all about carrying out registrations, renewing them. And let me remind you, it's not so that we can ultimately have uh, uh, licenses that have to be paid for. It's potentially to provide third party from disturbing the free and global spread of Rogan's technology. But in protection, you should also understand the fact of properly managing teams, finding resources to do the work, ensuring a financial balance, and also protecting the Frogan's project and technology working as a part of the delegation contract with the operator and also enabling uh, donations, since donations can be made to a B3FT to finance the project. Protection goes well beyond intellectual property. Moving on to the next uh, item, progress. I'm sorry for French speakers, but progress here in that fact refers to Development, developing the Frogan's technology. Around developing Frogan's technology, you mainly have the technical development. As I said before, it's not only about people working on software code, but teams doing drafting, uh, technical specifications, teams doing implementation on, or R&D. So this is very important. Development is very broad indeed. And lastly, in all of this, according to our resources, and this is important, OP3FT has a budget of 1.8 to 2 million per year, 2.8 with the delegation contract, 1.8 million euros. So this mission must be carried out with that budget. In future, the contract with the operator, meaning receiving 15% of all amounts collected for uh, uh, registering addresses, will enable us to be able to grow and reach 200 or 300 people in our organization. An organization developing an open standard for the internet requires this. One last slide. In among the first testers who worked with us, many people asked us questions regarding how we could ensure the stability of the project. And our answer is that it's provided for in our bylaws, Article 5. So, just three examples to illustrate how stability is mentioned in our bylaws. Look at the third bullet point on the screen. There is nothing more annoying in the world out there when you buy a terminal. There is nothing more annoying than scheduled or programmed obsolescence. So. We have a very powerful principle. If you've developed a Frogan site six months ago and there is a new version of the FSDL language, if there is a new version which is out there, your Frogan's site will still be operational because the Frogan's player technology supports the current version of FSDL language. So there is back compatibility, so to speak, so that you don't need to redo what you've done already. Now, if there are new functionalities available with the new version of the FSDL language and the designer wants to, to use these new functionalities, he can, but he doesn't have to use the new language. Or when you develop a standard and you claim that navigation experience is going to be the same on all screens, well, let's face it, it's not the case at the moment. If you're on a computer, if you use a touchpad, or if you have a mouse, 
then you use your smartphone and it's tactile it's or you can have a tactile control on your watch or on your tablet so we need a standardized navigation experience at two levels and we are thinking so that whatever type of screen you use and whatever type of device you use you have the same experience and in parallel to that whatever the interaction and in the future it might be the blink of an eye or language words spoken language so in OP3FT's mission we need to provide a standardized experience to all users whatever the device and then within the framework of the evolution of the internet we went from IPv4 to IPv6 there are discussions here in this very venue there are discussions about networks of the future and there is a lot of work done on other protocols different from the HTTP protocol which is used to disseminate content mostly but the Frogan's technology was designed in order to be independent from data transportation protocols so in the future the end user won't be in trouble because of new evolutions on the internet. It's not a problem of the user, it's the technology's problem to anticipate on these evolutions. Therefore, the Frogan's technology will be operational in the future on other networks than the HTTP network, for instance. Okay, so that's it. For the examples, I was more into details than I usually am, but I wanted to talk about stability, I wanted to talk about the way we work, and all this is part of our bylaws. Thank you very much indeed, Amory. Alors, est-ce que, voilà, est-ce que vous m'entendez Alors, Amory, merci beaucoup pour cette présentation. J'aimerais, si vous me le permettez, vous, vous poser une question. Thank you very much indeed, Amory. Uh, if you have any question in the audience, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, Alexandre, my colleague, is in the audience and he will co come to you with a mic. Amory, you talked about OP3FT's uh, resources. You said that your resources uh, came from donations and from a delegation contract. So I don't know if this was very clear for everyone, but maybe you want to explain that this is a similar funding system as the one available for the web. But is there, is there any other way OP3FT can generate resources? Well, I'll answer through one article in our bylaws that says OP3FT is banned for any profit-making activity. So you won't be able to sell OP3FT or Frogan's t-shirts, for instance. So more seriously, OP3FT cannot perform this general interest mission and at the same time operate or manage the central register registry for, for uh, Frogan's address, addresses. It's a very complex registry but these are addresses and this wonderful pair that you have in other publishing systems makes it possible for content to be circulated on the internet unlike apps which are stored in an app store and they can't be transmitted via a link and this is what made the web absolutely fantastic in the beginning is the hypertext link. So OP3FT, back to funding, OP3FT delegates a license to a commercial entity to give them the right to operate the Frogan's addresses uh, registry. So the operator of the central Frogan's addresses registry cannot cash in with uh, 
for, for addresses, well, some money was cashed in because there were some pioneers who registered Frogan's addresses even before we moved to the dissemination phase, which is ahead of us. But there is a contract that says that the funding of OP3FT is 15% of all income generated by the registration of Frogan's addresses. And if there is no registration, there is a minimum income of 1.8 million euros. So French law, the prefect of Paris, has signed a prefect order so that we can accept donations, but only for French taxpayers, whether individual taxpayers or corporate taxpayers, because then they can uh, subtract that from their taxes. So, so far, because uh, there is just so many of us doing so many things, so we've not yet implemented a campaign to call for donations for OP3FT, but unlike other organizations, we have an annual budget. So we don't want to start scaring away new entrants who might think, OK, if they get no donation, there won't be any project. Well, this is not the case. We don't need donations. We have a budget. Donations would just help us speed up things. It would speed up the work that we just talked about. So we have this delegation contract with a guaranteed budget of 1.8 million euros plus donations. And in our accounts that we published, uh, donations amounted to 8,000 624 euros, so you can imagine that this is not enough to fund the mission I just talked to you about. Okay, thank you.